start by saying on behalf of uh, the Chairman Gilbert Kari and the management uh, of uh, Power, welcome to Power House. This is our house where we get um, the nation talking uh, and uh, we are glad that you are a part of this conversation happening here today. We're starting uh, at about 10 o'clock and we'll be going live on a show that's called Power Talk that is presented by Aldrin Sinclair. I am Tabu I present Power Breakfast with Paul Mabena, um, uh, who uh, is just landed, I think, from Eastern Bloom, as opposed to being here, doing what I am doing right now. Really, this is a conversation that seeks to highlight what is already out there, a conversation that has been going on on social media, it's going on on um, other radio shows, on television, and so on and so forth. But we, we, we just wanted to get all the minds into one room and highlight what seems to be the challenge in the space that we call the arts. Uh, relationships between uh, broadcasters, uh, production houses and performers, uh, and why performers are seemingly getting the whole deal of the stick as far as uh, this uh, value chain is concerned. So that is uh, essentially what the conversation is about. And at power, we tend to want to be a little robust, speak truth to power, I uh, hold nothing back, and uh, I most certainly hope that's exactly what's going to happen here because we've got a whole lot of practitioners who are present in the house who are going to share their lived experience. We want to thank uh, also all those who are supporting this initiative, including uh, the uh, Housing Department of uh, Arts and Culture uh, and the Film Commission, as well as Power 98.7. Before we begin then with the conversation, and uh, we will be introduced momentarily to the uh, members of our panel. Um, let me just quickly uh, give you some of the house rules. It is a live broadcast, so naturally, as artists, we know that our phones have got to be off because that will interfere with the uh, broadcast. So please keep your uh, uh, phones on silent, please, uh, because we don't want that interfering with the broadcast. Uh, when it's uh, the moment for your question, because we've got two hours and because we've got such a full room, Please try and limit it to one question, but also don't give it a huge preamble. Give it as short a question as you possibly can so that we can be able to accommodate everybody and all the views that uh, we possibly can get. The hashtag, for those who are tweeting, it's hashtag power dialogue, hashtag growing counting together. Uh, and we have provided facilities so that you can be able to access the Wi-Fi, if you go to the catering table, there are, there's a two pieces of paper that have uh, got the login details uh, with the username and the password, so we can be able to then access our uh, 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 facilities here at Power and be able to treat and do that. When we begin with a dialogue, these doors at the front, I believe, will be closed. So if you need to access the bathroom, you need to have to use that door. Um, so you will have to go out there and go all the way around and uh, the bathrooms are right here uh, and they are clearly marked. You'll be able to access them from that point. And I think that's about it uh, from my side. Thank you once again for being here. 
uh, and uh, we have a fruitful engagement with the Thank you.
million people in this state to vote in these elections, or for anyone expected to extend it, stay in power, or one of the reasons that team in the independent government in
and you know, on air, I would start off and ask the questions and what, 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 what. But always, but what should I play? What should I play? Okay, so part of our panelists is we have Mbaile Tlope, the housing MEC of Sports, Arts and Culture and Recreation. And the MEC, thank you again uh, for actually sponsoring this event as well. We really appreciate it. Um, and then we have the Anne Kumalo, co-founder and MD of Facility Films, Kathy Davis, Deputy Chairperson of the IPO and producer at Story Scope, Malalo, veteran actress, Nandita Bumlana as well, actress and cultural activist who are part of the panelists. But we also have um, veterans as well as producers who are part of today's conversation among some of you in the audience as well. So we will be taking your calls a bit later on, on 061 Please, when you tweet, please use hashtag power dialogue. That is hashtag uh, power dialogue. Hashtag power dialogue, hashtag power talk, and tweet at Alvin Sapir, tweet at powerfm987. So, let's go there. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? If, if Ukwadile, Ukwadile, it's okay. <laughs> we accept anger on power. We allow anger on power. But it's not about the anger, it's about the passion that leads to the anger. How are you? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Just quickly introduce yourself. I am Ms. Vasayende, and I'm a subsequent music practitioner of Preston uh, and Coach Coach. Okay, so your comment or question? Okay, um, I'll take just uh, this one in English. Okay. Um, I'm part of, uh, I'm amongst hundreds of qualified music practitioners in Belgium who do not get singing gigs and teaching jobs despite qualifications. And I'd like to say we've seen programs like the Housing Sports Award, which I believe that they become an investor in a lot of funds to execute such a big project. We don't have classical music awards yet. Why as a musician within the province are doing so in the classical music facility? And the question is, what are the opportunities for arts and culture as the department is so focused on consuming sports? And also, when will the department take charge in empower, uh, empowering young people of housing? Because I believe that one of the key things that the department wants to invest in is developing the youth of the province. What are problems in the townships? Also, we do not have classical music instruments to assist with the training of young singers, as we have students that are unemployed, but they are so keen to study music. But they do not have access, and we assist them. For example, one of my singing students represents the housing province at the national level of the school choral competition. She's in the tree and she wants to pursue a career in music. And as someone who studied music, I don't know how best to advise her. I mean, I mean advise her. Because I have faced the realities of the creative, uh, creative industry, particularly the classical music person. And lastly, classical music, I'd like to make this clear. Classical music is not white people's music, as people always say. We are here, and there's actually thousands of us who look uh, and we look to this as a profession. Thank you so much for that. And you see, I think that's for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think firstly, let me just thank everybody for coming here. Um, we really see this engagement as one that is critical. I think we're all aware of what's going on in social media and the discussions regarding the creative industry in particular. It's a huge industry for the country and particularly for the province. I mean, the ITC estimates the industry to be worth 68 billion, so that's quite a lot. But you'll note that artists, producers, broadcast, broadcasters, there's issues that are there. And lots of people have been complaining and et cetera. And we really thought that we should have this platform so that we're able to bring everybody together to discuss the importance of the industry and how we can work together to build it. So we see this as being something that ought to be, cre uh, ought to be productive in that, yes, we want to hear the complaints. And I'm glad and I really am going to speak to what you have raised now. It's critical for us to hear what you want to say. We are equally aware of some of the challenges that people have identified. I mean, Mom Batiso has written the letter that everybody is speaking about now. We really are listening to what your various complaints are. And as a government is to say, we really want to bring everybody together. There are bills that are there. There are contesting views. Some are pro, some are not. But it would really be great to hear what is the majority saying about this. Because one thing that is certain is that we do need to protect the industry. We do need to regulate it. So that goes without saying. With regards to the province, we've taken an approach that seeks to decentralize our work. And what I mean by that is that we're paying particular focus to our regions. So when you speak about your townships, that is critical for us. It's in fact, it's part of the mandate of the sixth administration, is to say that we need to focus not only on people that are in the towns and so forth, but to go as far as Isidibeng, Mamelo, Westwind, you name them. So your various townships, because that's where we need to unearth the talent. 
And a lot of people don't know because they say, okay, fine, so there is a department, how are you going to assist us? Because we have the talent, but how do we make sure that it can be nurtured, it can be unearthed and so forth? One of the critical programs that we came up with was to identify even the kids that are on the street. And we've said, let's celebrate the street. You know when you drive along and you see young people that are performing on the streets? It's because they've been everywhere else, but they're not discovered and they resort to the street as a platform for them to be able to have their talent being discovered. So we've said, why don't we, instead of people constantly driving past them and seeing them as invisible parts of our society, let's make sure that we, we work with them, we integrate them, We've spoken to the Department of Social Development, so those that need shelter, that might be engaged in substance abuse and so forth, that part is taken care of. What our interest is, how do we unearth their talent? And so we've started to integrate them in our various programs. You spoke of the sports awards, they were there. In fact, some of the, uh, the dancers that were dancing for TKT were the guys that we took right from the robots who perform every day. You speak about the carnival and so forth, so we really are integrating artists in the various ways that we can within the department so that they are able to get some remuneration. It's not enough, but it's a step in the di right direction. And this engagement, we see it really as being an avenue for us to bring everybody on board. It's unfortunate that some of the broadcasters could not join us, and I do understand that they will yeah. be online, um, well, through the well, phone. Well, the SMUCs will be online. Yeah. yeah, because they are a critical stakeholder. And I think for a lot of them, they're feeling a bit scared because they feel like everybody's bashing them mm -hmm. because people are not receiving the money that they deserve. And we really are saying it's not a bashing session. We are just saying let's bring everybody together because everybody needs to be protected. In the same way that the artists are complaining, the broadcasters, broadcasters sorry, need to realize that they do need the artists on board. Mm -hmm. And so you need to take better care of them. Of them. We obviously as a government are not going to <coughs> sit back when people constantly raise issues of being violated of a special type of slavery taking place and so yeah. forth. So we do need to bring this discussion and to unfold it. And we've taken this public platform. It's, it's mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying to me, you're very brave uh, because a lot of people are going to criticize you. It's fine. I mean, we've said we welcome criticism because yes. that's the only way that we can actually learn and we can and be able to hear what you And on. the broadcasters should be doing the same as well yeah. because they play a pivotal role. On the issue around um, the awards, at the core of the debate around the awards is recognition. It's that artists want to be recognized. And Mamdi Lekwe, you spoke about the Asela Awards at the Mayan Memorial Service. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about the Asela Awards not only need to get an award under the apartheid government, but you also got money with it. I am really happy that you listen to me and you remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a pity that the SNC is not here. But I'm glad the government is here. I'm only here because I wanted to be seen. In 2016, <laughs> I said everything. It's a pity you are not marching tech. I wanted you to be here. Because I'm tired of speaking and speaking and nothing happens. Yes. Today I'm bringing solutions. Yes.
I don't know, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> they mess up. I'm not going to be using foul language, but as an elder, I'm allowed. But now I'm going to show you. So, yeah. They fired them and they hired them as consultants. And because they were bitter, they were charging an arm and a leg and doing all sorts of things. And then Yamanala, I've never seen anybody mention Udali, because Udali was the first one who could demand. There you go. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> Nobody mentions that. No. And it's in the ANC government, because they didn't know the ANC, the SNBC. They did away with dabbing, killing the actors. There were actors who had, who had a livelihood through dabbing. They lost their houses, their children were taken out of the best schools. So what I want to ask this beautiful lady from the government is, does the government even know what is happening? Because to start with, we as actors are not regarded as workers. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. But we're highly taxed. Yeah. We cannot get a loan. Mm -hmm. The only thing the government knows is to congratulate us, no, I am saying the NC and the SABC must admit that they made a big mess because they put people who knew nothing. That is why they are still in this mess. Okay, so I'm going to ask um, the MEC to quickly respond to that and then I'm going to take from what you just said, uh, Mary Lynn Dube and have the conversation around uh, commissioning so that our listeners and um, those who are here as well, just to understand how commissioning normally works and how commissioning is different between what happens at the SABC and what happens at the MNET or at the SCB. Because, you know, on Tuesdays, you normally have the academic digest. And um, one of um, the papers that we will be looking into today, of course, we won't have a, a big, big focus on the academic digest, is a dissertation that looked into the unfair commissioning practices in the South African and television film industry. But let me see, just quickly respond to my familiar with you. Thanks for that. Look, um, I've indicated earlier that there are a lot of complaints, and you're correct, Manuelina. You know, a government has, has really tried to bring some order in within the sector. And what I mean by that is that we know that there is expectation, there are individuals that are not happy with their working conditions and so forth. In the previous administration, one of the things that the president at the time had said was that artists need to unite. Because not in the is is different. You're speaking past each other, but you're not in any way centralizing and bringing that messaging forward. And that's why ISIFSA was created. To say, here's a body of individuals. Um, how do we make sure that they are able to work together and so forth? And of course, there's been issues there also. So I'm not going to get into that because I think there's been a lot of leadership issues within that body. But one of the other things that government has tried to do was to say, how do we regulate the sector and make sure that protectors are protected? I mean, performers are protected. And that's why you have the Performance Protection Bill, which is really there about protecting the individuals. And that's why the work was not just a government initiative and was left at that. There were artists that were part and parcel, and I think they'll speak for themselves and how far they were with that process to make sure that they voice themselves and say, look, this is what we feel should be done. This is what we're going through and et cetera. So that bill is there. It, it's now sitting with the president and there's various views that are there around it again, because some artists are saying, yes, we need this. This is what will protect us. While others are saying, no, in fact, it's not going to assist us, et cetera. So there are a lot of contesting views, but the difficulty is that we're not getting one centralized view from everybody to say this is how you can intervene as a government, you can assist us. But the bill is but, before but, for everybody but to But MEC, engage. isn't it true that with, with whichever bill that you come up with, that there will always be people who do not agree? Yeah. It will always be the case. But what governments seem to have done and failed at is to take a decisive decision that says that we are going to do this in the interest of our people instead of listening to what lobbying groups from outside of the country are saying about it. Absolutely. And you're very correct. That's exactly what we did. Because we said, we, we're also tired as a government to constantly hear about artists try, dying as paupers and so forth. Because by the way, it's government that needs to them. And, every time, and you wonder, but this person is a celebrated individual within society, but they're just not making. It's not translating to rents and cents in their pocket. So there's really a big problem there. 
And that's why we've taken the initiative to say, here's a bill, how do we protect artists? How do we protect performers? And it's now sitting before the president for signature so that if we can be able at least to say there is a way that we are attempting mm -hmm. to, to regulate the sector and protect the performers that are there. So that we never have to hear, that you're saying, Mami, and I understand, because we have been speaking for a very long time. But there is progress that is coming, and this is really what we, we'd like to see. <laughs> what? No. Um, on, on this, on this, because, just on because, this because, because, because the MEC has now taken it to the, the legislative part of it. Let's, let's deal with the legislative part, and then we'll come back to the commission. We have uh, a bill before the before the president, and I think we need to acknowledge how how far that bill has come, and that is the important part of it. The lobby groups will there will always be a lobby group mm -hmm. against this uh, against the uh, paint being white and not white enough to be white. But the problem, what I want to just remind you, is that for as long as you, you wait to sign that bill, another child who's entering the industry is being exploited. The long, another day that you don't sign that, that bill, another child is dying on set because the set is not regulated. Another day that you wait to, to not, not signing that bill, Oma Munien is tired, Uma Ismara is tired, not because we're suffering on set, but because our hard work is, go, is, is for naught. Mm. You say you speak for the people, but when the people tell you what to do, you say, wait, 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 let me, let, let, let me, let me, I'm not sure what you're saying yet. Let me ask so-and-so, let me ask so-and-so. But you're not talking to the people that are actually going through it. And that's where the problem is with the bill. It's gone through NCMB. We lobbied in Parliament, for heaven's sake, on our own bill. I wasn't sent to Parliament. Nobody paid for me. I went there myself. No, I've been working with the DTI for years on end now. This bill has gone through the artists and has the support of the artists. What is taking you so long? Mm. What's stopping you from protecting us? Here's what happens. If the labor law says, if Unabita is, is expected on a specific um, place for three months, uh, sorry, for 40 hours within a three month period, yeah. then you are acknowledged as a worker. Thank you, LRA. Thank you for protecting me. But the contracts that I am signing undermines all of that and nullifies all of that protection under the labor law. Mm -hmm. Yet, SARS is still expecting me their 25% from me. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do not acknowledge who I am, mm -hmm. where do you think you're getting my money from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the dichotomy here is, is, is not that we, do, uh, we need to be organized. You will never find that anywhere in the world there is not an actor's union except for equity, except for actor, a representation of actors. Not a union, we're not those kind of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe you should. No, 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 I'm not gonna change you to be a girl. No, no, no. Don't no, ask no, me to be a boy. No, 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 but now we're having conversations around where, 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 artists, where artists are failing is they're failing to be united. And that's no, the I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to describe to you the nature of this beast. Yeah. Don't try to change the beast from being a horse into your view. It's not gonna be that. Acknowledge that the beast is this kind of beast and work within that. We're not gonna be different people. We're not gonna be different We're not gonna be bankers, Wooty. Mm -hmm. Don't try to treat us, treat us like bankers. We're not gonna be part of Satu. We don't know what they're talking about. No, 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 we have our own no, language. No, no, and if government, no, no, no. allow me to finish. If government needs to represent us, government needs to know who we are and how we operate. Audrey, you don't understand. No, I, I think we, from my end at least, I feel like we are, we are alive. No, you feel because, not. Because, no, no, because. No, it's okay to yeah. please disagree. Because, here's the thing about it. If artists are not united, under what banner are they, will they be united? If they are not united. Uh, allow me to answer And you. then again, it is not that because you are a banker, you cannot be in a union. No, 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 no. I'm deep up with you. Allow me to use the a banker can join in Zanzika a trade union yes. or, 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 or other. Yeah. That's fine. That is, the, that is the nature of their work experience, the nature of their industry. Mm -hmm. That's all well and good. That's who they are and that's how they work. Mm -hmm. If you want to know who I am and how I work, you come and ask me. Don't come and dictate to me how I should operate. If you want to know this industry, learn it from the people who operate in this industry. And that's the big mistake that is being made in this environment right now. Actors have spoken. Okay, we're going to agree to disagree. Is anyone, Aubrey, is Aubrey here? Aubrey, Aubrey from the Communication Workers Union. Where is Aubrey? Aubrey, okay, so Aubrey is not here. Okay, I'm going to ask you, Mama, to quickly just um, add on that. Uh, I'm going to be very... The biggest mistake was 
for us in the creative industry to allow the ruling party to deploy politicians to be ministers of arts and culture when they don't understand our industry. The deployment thing has got to stop. Uh, I've said it, I've been meaning to say it for years, I've said it to certain people and I hope my brains don't fail in the coming weeks. Because now I'm asking that we really need to seriously think about a minister of arts and culture who understands the industry. There is many people in our industry who are retired, who are no longer performing artists but who could be in that office and understand when I say I am sick and tired of being paid peanuts because I'm not a monkey. Now, because we don't have that, I remember complain. I was not complaining. I'm called complaining. I was not complaining. I, I, I asked the minister, first of all, I don't go to these gala dinners where you're invited to come and eat. I can eat Morocco and Nepal in my house. Don't invite me to drive to an event at the Empress Palace, some awards, where I don't even feature in those awards. And expect me to smile and be happy when I'm paid my own petrol. Now, when I ask, I said, why am I here? Because I never go to these events. You were there, Lillian. Why am I here? I always go. And, and, <laughs> and he says, well, I think that there was a, 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 a change of things. Uh, by the way, I was there because I was called to send my, to send my, my, my profile and blah, 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 because I'm one of the recipients for that bloody award, I can't even remember. <laughs> now, I'm sitting there, we were taken to a, a, a holding room, and I'm thinking, ooh, for, for a change, I'm going to get an award today. And then we go and sit, to, I'm putting the table number two, not far from the minister's table. And the events go on. The awards get dished out. The, at the end of the evening, I'm asking, why am I here? <laughs> and I ask the minister, and you know what he said to me? I'm going to tell all of you, and I know you're all listening. And he's probably listening. He said to me, hey, my man, we can to complain. Now, I'll never forget that. Because why I'm saying deployment of politicians to run as ministers of arts and culture has got to come to a end. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah. So, 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 no, Kevin must come here. Kevin must come to me. Kevin must come to me. No, he must come to me. Yeah, he must come to me. He must come to me. Because of my, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Did you know that the Labour Relations Assessment allowed the Assessment to unionize? And also, yes, the Labour Relations doesn't work that way. That's what you're saying. Doesn't work that way. Yes. But that's what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, when I'm saying. I am a shopper. I'm here for a reason to say something, okay? Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. So send a letter. Is it short enough to send it on WhatsApp? Yeah, it's a three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please contact me for a meeting because I need to pay them mama vouchers for them to get to school next year. And maybe in Batanyana is a Christmas. Yeah. No, no, no. no. But with all the problems we're seeing, we don't want to Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yeah. So we're still focusing on the bill. So there are two bills though. It is not just uh, the performance protection bill, but also uh, the copyright bill, which we also need to discuss. Um, but let me just quickly get um, uh, the end for my local founder and MD of Civic Citizens. Your take on the whole conversation around um, the two bills. Let's first start with the performance bill and then we go to copyright bill. Sure. I think um, what you're mentioning is important that it is two bills. Um, and I think the bill that probably has the most contentious industry views or where we have most division in the industry is around the copyright amendment bill. As producers, we're very much supporting um, that actors, writers, producers, creators need to be earning royalties from their work. And, and we definitely advocate that this is something that we need, we need to have happen. On the Copyright Amendment Bill, I think there's several things that possibly still need to be considered around how the policy is implemented. Um, there are several parts of the bill that maybe haven't really been thought out. We need to iron out a few things. Is that the fair use? The fair use clause. Yeah. Um, and how yeah. is, can we really use a blanket bill for all artists? Mm. I think that's where we're yeah. getting into um, where people see us as being divided. Yeah. But I think it's important to remember that we're not divided over the intention of this bill. Mm -hmm. It's just looking at um, the practicalities. Yeah. Some of the concern was actually that uh, there wasn't enough consultation, at least when it comes to the copyright bill. Is that your take as well? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Um, I think you've mentioned it as well uh, previously, which is that there's always going to be room for people to, you know, come from different opinions yeah. and views. And what's contained in the bill is contained in the bill, mm -hmm. despite people's differences. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to put pressure on getting to a point where a decision is made around the bill that's mm -hmm. out of our hands at this point, that's in the hands of the presidency. Um, and once a decision no, is made- No, it's not, it's not. Because the reason that the president isn't signing is because people are lobbying him, do you understand? So if you guys are not lobbying the president, then the other guys might just win. And convince no. the president. No, no I, don't, I don't, the IPO definitely doesn't take this view of lobbying. Okay. Um, so I don't, we've not really been involved in that. As I've said, we very much. Uh, can you all hear me? 
Okay. Yep. All right. Can I use this? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, for me, for me, um, um, it's about the legislation. Um, I hear about government all the time uh, making whether it's an excuse or it's legitimate to say artists unite, artists unite, artists unite. Um, you know, it's in South Africa in particular, it has shown that artists are not at the main perhaps that keen to unite. You know, artists are independent, they are uh, very creative people, and all over the world it's been very difficult to unite creative people. So not that they don't want to work together, but if you fix the legislative framework, then you fix the problem. And, and I think um, MEC, um, a government should take the responsibility. It's government's responsibility to protect the most vulnerable. And this is why the bills were drafted in the first place. And, and, and this way we, we, we see government cannot listen to lobbyists. Lobbyists are like white monopoly capital. Who want what they want? So I always ask the question for those who are opposed to the bills and say, okay, where are we now? If you are opposing the bills, what is the status quo? What has the status quo done for the industry? It has only obliterated, uh, uh, obli uh, 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 no, yeah, that, that way, that English way. So, 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 so now, so it means that we need a change. So the change might be not a change that is satisfactory to everybody, but it is a change at least, and you will always find resistance to change. So I think with those clauses and provisions that are outstanding, and you're quite right on in terms of, say, uh, let's uh, lobby the president. It's, uh, the president wants to hear our voice, but he's not hearing our voice, the creatives. He's hearing the voice of the lobbyists. They are louder than anything, and he's wondering, should I sign or should I not sign? But she's also quite right, Ms. Kumar, to say, um, it is the president's prerogative that uh, is sitting with him. So we are asking the president one thing, uh, sign the bills, or return them to the National Assembly. Uh, because of uh, you've got to do something, at least do something. I was listening to Florence Masaba over the weekend, and she said that very remarkable statement, do something, don't just sit on the bills. And I'm saying the bills are progressive, uh, and I, need, I think they need to be supported, and those provisions that are problematic, let's see how we can fix them. But to send them back, it's more devastating, because of it's gonna take us a long time to get to where we are today. Okay, Thank you. So my, my, my take is you want to lobby, believe me, that you want to lobby. Because even if you look at American politics, it is those who lobby who win at the end of the day. If you keep quiet, the president is not going to hear you, right? Um, okay, Owen. Thank you very much, uh, Owen. And thank you very much, uh, Bachi, so to, to raise this uh, important issue and to be brave enough to go and write open letters on it. But why do we write open letters in the first place? It's because of there's no platform where artists can go and complain and be heard. Yeah. The arrogance up there is unbelievable. I can tell you, uh, you write to the MEC, you write to the minister, it's the same. On the 27th of June this year, I wrote to the very same MEC that is here with me. To date, I'm still yet to get a response or acknowledgement of the minister. <laughs> what did you write? No, I, I, I wrote, I wanted a meeting so that I can address my issues with them. And at that meeting, I've never even gotten an acknowledgement to say we did receive your complaint. To see the elders, the Kabumara law, coming here and they tell us that they were told that they talk too much, is unbelievable. This is an international staff. There is no platform. How come SADC doesn't have one board member that is coming from this industry? The very same broadcaster that is supposed to be feeding all of us, we don't have a representation. I think that's where the problem, the first problem starts. Secondly, I'm worried, uh, uh, Sister uh, Nabi, about the VA, because we never had a platform like this where we were called so that we can come and discuss the thing and go to Parliament with one agreement. I think that should have happened because of some people say I'm for the bill, some are anti the bill, and I don't know which part to belong to, to be myself because of, I don't know what should we be saying. Mm -hmm. So we must discuss this bill as artists, so that when we go there, we go with one voice. Yes, it's true, we're not united. That is the problem. We gotta stop working in silos so that we can discuss things and our problems can be here. I think that's where we should be settled. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm MBC Vice Approval, I'm a producer and director of CLAN. Um, I just wanna add to what my other colleagues Um, 
on the basis that when our government came into power, we were abandoned. Mm. They knew about us. Mm. I was once called a seller because I started working with the president of Kansas. Then. And I'm one of the people who were the first black men, black director to be appointed to the Arts Council in this country. Not because I was black, because I had something to offer to the industry. I had so much experience. I won so many awards as a director of television, as an actor on stage, in theater. I was one of the first people to have the market theater, who was the first one to perform in the state theater, MC Nkosi Sikelela, in the state theater. None of our politicians, when they came into power, acknowledged us that we were around. Mm. And we were able, with a track record and experience, to be able to take the jobs that they took, that they deployed people to, and deliver on those jobs. Mm. Not politics, but to deliver for our co-workers. To be able to be able to say, we're united. We would have been united by the work we produce. We would have been united by working together, not being disseminated as we are now. It's wicked now. It's survival of the future. Yeah. Now we have people who didn't even do one day in school for grammar or anything, who appear on screen and they, they don't care how much money they take. Don't accept anything. And it's survival of the future. We cannot blame them. In the same breath, I say, as elders, we should blame ourselves for not taking sports enough to pave the way for these young ones. I remember on sets taking to young ones saying, do you have a policy, that policy? Do you have an endowment, an investment? Do you have medical? Please start charging what you are worth so that you can be able to pay for those things because time is going to come when you won't have money to do anything. And that is where most of our artists end up. We go to the funerals, we go wherever. So the bills and all that must come to an end. We need to be decisive and say, as you said, my brother, this is the bill. The government must take care of us when it comes to this. They must regulate. They must implement these laws, and then the laws will bring us together. Thank you very much. Okay, is there anyone at all here who doesn't agree with any one of the bills? Anyone who does not agree with any one of the two bills? Okay, so we've got the two bills. We've got the one bill that focuses on performers, and the one bill that focuses on royalties, which is the copyright bill. Yeah. Morning. Good morning, um, I think there's, there's issues with both bills. I don't think that the performance bill is a perfect bill. I think there are ways in which it could be strengthened and, and made stronger. I think what we need to do... Give us an example. Um, I think that, for instance, in, in, it doesn't deal with the issues that... Most of the issues that are in Writers for Work. It doesn't deal with them. They're not there. It deals with royalties. That's the real thing that it deals with. But the rest of the instruments that we need in terms of performance protection aren't in those bills. So what we need to do is really say, I think we need to pass, um, we need to decouple them, we need to divorce them. Because they've been, and, and that's the big problem. They've been put together and they're stuck together. And one is a really problematically badly drafted bill which will kill them, I think. <laughs> Copyrighted memory bills is a very, very badly drafted bill which will kill this industry because all the money will go to Google, will go to all these international bodies rather Where is than the money back going to now? us as creators. Where is the money just going just now? Us, how, how, how would that bill not benefit the industry? How would the industry be bankrupt by Google and the... Uh, it's a very complex bill and there's very many provisions, but there are very many ex exclusionary clauses within it, which say, for instance, that what you give on the one hand, it takes away on the other hand in the bill. And I, I, I haven't got all of those in my head at the yeah, moment, see, but what we need there. to do is to decouple <laughs> them and there. resolve the issues in the Copyright Amendment Bill. If we resolve the issues in the Copyright Amendment Bill, we will be able to make money in this industry because copyright is our goal. If we give our gold to Google, how are we going to be made? Be, we're going to be back in the situation, be in, in, in imperialism coming in and taking all our, our, our riches. And that's what the current bill and the way it's structured is because.
those provisions enable our content to be out there for free. No. Uh, is it? So, so what we need to do, sorry, in there. what we need to do is to make sure, because the industry is in pain, so that's a problem. because the structures and the uh, legislations are all wrong. If we look at how, in, since 2006, there has not been a real term increase in the amount of money that is paid to producers. So if producers have had a basic 50% cut in what they receive, what is everybody else in the value chain going to receive? They're going to receive less and less and less and less. And who's going to be blamed? The person in the middle, the producers. And we shouldn't be blaming the producers because they're entrepreneurs. They're trying. Sure. Wow. They're trying to do this so and that. What see. we need to do is to resolve the issues and make sure that, first of all, that there are terms of trade with broadcasters. Broadcasters have not adhered to terms of trade. The uh, producers have been begging them since 2002. That's SABC. What's wrong with the there bills? There hasn't even been a discussion with them. So we need to have terms of trade which tell us how our relationship is going to be and what we're going to do in terms of Is there anyone here who's part of a production house who has done work for Mnet, BSTV? Anyone? Any, anyone?
both of them, to the industry for consultation, as opposed to just signing the immediately. Mayor Gondita, do you agree with that? Should the bill be coming back? We've been saying action, action, President, does the President do something? <laughs> I would love to use Jack now, just consult him, but uh, I couldn't, I was going back to my notes to try and remember why is it that the bills are coupled. And one of the biggest problems that Jack was, was uh, reminding me of is that as much as we want the lawyers to speak, they need to be contacted and they need to be defended. <laughs> and that's where the conflict of many bill comes in, and that's why they're coupled. And it's difficult for us because it slows us down on the PPAP. It's really, really painful for us. But there are issues with the corporate amendment as well. There are issues with the PAB, but we need to move forward. Mm -hmm. And when Jack just quickly on the issue around uh, collecting a society, because that was one of the issues that have been raised as well, that when it comes to film and um, TV, there's no collecting society. There is nothing in South African law that enables an actor in an audiovisual medium, film and television, to collect on royalties. This is why the provisions contained in the bills are so critical for South African actors. It is historic. It is absolutely necessary. It speaks directly, not just to Ms. Batiswa's letter, open letter, but also Patrick Shai's letter to the minister, which went out on, on Sunday as well. This is our only hope in order to try and secure a residual income, but it's not just about collecting money. We cannot afford as actors to make the mistakes that the music, music royalty collections make. We have got to be able to hold those organizations to account for the money that they collect on behalf of actors and for how it is distributed. That is why these bills are linked, and that is why we demand that they are signed. Well, and uh, then when we come back after Power News, we are going to have a conversation around transformation in the industry and whether um, the current processes around them unfair commissioning practices whether that actually leads to lack of transformation in the industry and stifles the industry. And it also, of course, goes back to the issue around do the producers have money? Do the producers have money? Is their work being respected? But is the work respected to such a point, or disrespected rather, to such a point where the person feels that I can't do anything? You start a production, you don't get the money, and what do you do? This industry isn't for me anymore. And you see, we can't have that, right? Yep. Okay, so we're going to go to Power News, and uh, when we come back as well. Okay, 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 it's about three minutes to Power News. I'm just quickly going to read your tweets at Alderman Simpia um, at uh, Power FM 987 and hashtag Power Talk. And uh, Nomti says, How I wish I could watch this on my screen. It is code lit, indeed. <laughs> yeah. And um, Sibo says, also the problem is much more bigger than simply getting the bill signed, e.g. just show me black creators who get sponsored uh, the same way Steve Hoffmeyer was getting sponsored from the likes of Toyota, MT, and etc. So no unity, so unity is the solution. And um, another tweet here from Denta who says, those artists will be campaigning for the same government without them raising their complaints. It seems they only worry when one of them is crying, they must show consistency. Is there anyone who's campaigning for the ANC? Anyone who's campaigning for the ANC during the last election? We always do. We always do. So I'm moving anyone, anyone? 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 Um, uh, in terms of the constitution for the freedom of association so and affiliation. So I'm a proud member of the ANC and I'm not shy and, and it's the ANC that brought me to get the ASF problems every year but it doesn't mean that the ANC is a bad organization. So what's up? <laughs> So we'll be taking your calls also after Power News on 0619700. Your tweets at Alderman Sinclair, hashtag Power Talk, and um, at Power FM 987. Please use the hashtag, hashtag Power Dialogue. That's hashtag Power Dialogue. When we come back, a conversation around transformation in the industry. Time for Power News.
<laughs> and they closed. I wanted to speak. <laughs> But there is so misdirection about the person. Yeah. No, people listen to people. Don't no, there's no thing yeah. that yeah. you say you must make three copies. There's uh -huh. no. Yeah. And, and then people then. are using that. Huh? Yeah. And, 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 that, and that's the problem. We, we must address it head on. Yeah. Uh, what's the problem with it? This, yeah. No, 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 no. It's a wrong interpretation. Yeah. Fair use doesn't say that. But what it means is that people are. Are rejecting what they've not read. That's the thing. They so hear from others. Exactly. Yes, and, and then, then you're the, from her say, her say. That's why there's a lot of people that believe sign it and then we'll figure it out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, the, the Google there, story is a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yeah. It's a conspiracy theory. But you see, the difficulty is that you guys don't want to write. No, no. The, the number one, artists don't read the schools. And number two, it's they want to write. So rather, do the legislative. But you know what the difficulty is? Yeah. Is that you want to deal with it as individuals. Yeah. It's not practical. The president's not going to go to every doorstep and no, say, what is your view? What yeah. is your view? But if you've got some board yeah. that says, on behalf of artists, this is what we're saying, yeah. it's a different board. You magnify it always. Yeah. But if you want to close the bills, only just because we're scratching the surface. Oh, 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 if you have to deal with, you still have to deal with transformation yeah. in the sector, yeah. the issues the of the implementation of the bill is, uh, you yeah. know, the yeah. private sector yeah. and so forth. Yeah. I mean, like the implementation. So you only just want to scratch the surface. But yeah. because you, you don't want to come together and have some body yeah. that's going to represent it, it's going to make it. But they see that the politics that come into it make it difficult. People go there by purpose. So some of us, we get tired. You know, we, we've been part of forming these organizations yeah. and then people will literally sell, sell their mothers. They sell you out. Nine, nine. They find uh, even now we've got a, a, a group called the coalition. So uh, uh, who are opposed to it? Who are these guys? Community societies, broadcasters. Uh, 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 so the people that are benefiting now. So it makes perfect sense. They want to keep the status quo. Then you've got uh, this recreate Jack belongs to that. I'm not part of recreate, but I as an artist I have to be in the music. I have to step back and say, why this guy saying we must oppose the bills? I started researching for myself. I found that even in the NCOP, all the political parties supported the bill except for the TA. Yeah. And, and, and so it went through the cracks. So government needs to say, take a decision and say, we are giving you this sort of legislation. So that yeah. that is when you've got legislation, people cannot do as they please. But the that's the only way. And the dissection. Yes, and the, 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 automatically artists are protected. Yes, legislation is not a panacea. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but government has to yeah. do it. Yes. You, if you rely on artists uniting, forget it. You, uh, you're going to finish your term, another one comes, finish their term, and all they will do is criticize the politicians and complain about politicians like that. And, and all of that. So yeah. you're not going to So use legislation. The government is there to But legislate. remember that legislation is enforced by individuals. No, no, no. But, but remember, when it has gone through the NCOP, it's been there for five years. Yeah. There has been enough consultation. I participated when I was the president of the Musician Association of South Africa and the chairman of the Gospel Musician Association of South Africa. I'm not 100% entirely happy to put up the digital yeah. contract. I won't be as regulated as you should be. But I'm saying, take it back, sending it back is not going to help us. It means the status quo will remain. Yeah. Sending it back. You get what I mean. So, yeah. so we, we can never allow the lobbies to tell government what to do. This is where I want to partner with you. We've never had a hand up with the MLA question. The bill, and those who supported it. Been in one room. This was supposed to be it. Yeah, yeah. So now, the problem I'm going to get them in the same room. As soon as we go to Lisa, head of Lisa, and we said, stop making noise, stop making uh, accusations saying we are captured by the Facebook group. Who doesn't pay? I said, I don't know who they are. Yeah. 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 So tell us uh, uh, what you have a problem with the thing. And then that will explain to you. If you're a lawyer, but you are missing yeah. some yeah. of the provisions. So then, from out of that, then as two opposing to we can have one message based not on the motion. But on fact, the president, uh, by the look of things, we are better so off if we sign them, and the things that are not right, we can deal with them later. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
the same way that we're doing now. And one of the things that was coming out quite uh, pronounced, well, that was quite pronounced was the issues around transformation. Because artists are saying, you know, the bills are one thing, you're just scratching the surface. There's issues around transformation that, so that we really need to, to dwell, delve right deep into and start to see how do we transform the sector. Because a lot of people think, there's a, it's, yes, it's nice, you may be in the front of the camera, but what happens behind it? Who are the people that own the content and so forth? That's where the money lies and that's where we need to transform. And a lot of the times that we've been saying to artists is that you need to make sure that you diversify as much as possible. It's a competitive industry that you're in, and the only way you're going to, and what I mean by that is that diversify, expand your skills within the industry. The value chain is quite long, so you need to be able to tap into the various areas within the value chain. If you want to be able to sustain yourself sufficiently, being in front of the camera is not sufficient. Yes, it's, it's nice because you are artists, you're creative, you want to be in front, but do explore being behind be content creators and so forth. So we, we really were looking at a number of issues with the individuals last month, and these are some of the issues that were coming up, but let's transform. How do we expand on the knowledge of individuals? How do we also assist them with financial management? Because as you've indicated, it's not a regular job where you're guaranteed that month end you will have your salary. Yes. There's also issues about financial management that artists were saying, look, maybe we're not managing our, our money sufficiently, the department ought to have some workshops on financial management as some of the avenues that we deal now with the individuals as subjective beings and so forth. So there's a number of areas that have come through and it's good that we're having this and people are voicing themselves up, but I really do think that regulating the industry, and it starts with the, with the legislation that is in place. Oh, Mam Nandita, we're just speaking now. I mean, you've worked quite a lot with this bill, and you know where it's come from. Yes. So there are a number of artists that have been participating. It's not just you. There are various individuals and stakeholders who have been coming through to say these are what our issues are. We're at the point now where it's just awaiting the, 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 the signature of the president. And it will get to that point. One of the things in my discussions with the minister yesterday, he had equally indicated that he and the minister of the DTI will be meeting because they want to advise and guide the president now on how to deal with this. We're hearing, yes, there are a lot of uh, individuals that are contesting it. There are those that are pro and those that are not. But they're really, the sitting that's going to take place is really to say how do they advise the, the president and how do we move forward? Because what we can't avoid is that we do need to regulate it. And I think this is where the common area that we all share and we all agree on. Okay, so we're going to take your calls quickly on uh, power line 061 Please be short, sharp, and straight to the point so that we can go through as many comments as possible. And after that, we're going to open the floor as well and take some of your comments and questions as well. But as well, please be short, sharp, and straight to the point. Unfortunately, uh, time is against us. Let's go to Ayanda. Good morning, Ayanda. Hey, good morning, sir. Hmm. Yes. My name is Ayan Nakhoda, the Secretary General of ISA. Yes. Uh, I, I, I want to, to make it clear to the crowd and to the NDC and the leadership in the panel that we've got a problem with two things in the industry. We've got artists that uh, they are treating themselves as celebrities, so that we have a of any such, and that thing on its own is taking us back as the industry. We've got artists that are willing to contribute and assist, and when the NDC said, uh, didn't make a mistake when they said there's a structure that calls this or that. I think they should find a way. I know there were problems first. In the first leadership, the first leadership did not have any, any ways of communication, did not consult this, I think did not speak to in that There's a new leadership that is willing to come and assist and listen. And this is not all about uh, those leadership that were elected in Malanga. We are here, we are saying, let's go, let's go to each other, let's engage. Let us not make ourselves as if uh, as it was your own team every day and that is the best that that's going to assist us. And the issue of transformation that we need to address and regulate the, the sector. It's one of the key issues that we should need to focus on. And we can only do that through policies, not through uh, discussions that we're having today or not through any other but through influencing policies. So the issue of this copyright amendment bill is very complex, I think. We know about it. And, and most of the things that are voted on by Google and which are Western companies, and those are people who are and see what they're doing. Most of the uh, Western people are the ones that are saying this thing for they've got an interest in mm -hmm. making sure that this bill gets passed and benefits them. It doesn't speak about us as black people. Did you read the bill? Owning our own content. Did you and read the bill? That's what we the problem. We are having a situation of disparity in the figures. It's black on black, that issue. And I want to check it's not about the, the figures and so on, but it's about the system that was created uh, 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 by, by, by the same government to say, well, you will inherit it after 1994, you will continue with it, you won't do anything with it. How do we make it sustain? It can only be really through unity. And unity is about helping 
think at the rate level I listen to and having a new level of the labor issues. Mama, and uh, they spoke about issues of forced labor that they are not recognized as a right. It's true, they don't have the right hand. They don't have this kind of age. I'm yeah. saying that labor parties that they receive on their head. And the union should stand up and address those issues. Okay. And if we keep on saying there's no need for CISA, there's also no need for union. So then the day the that's going to be fragmented forever and ever. So let's Okay, thank you. Sorry, Ayanda. Guys, please keep it short. Yes, Zola, please keep it short. Good morning. I will be brief. Um, I think my comments fall into two categories. Effectively, I blame the press, but it's about the numbers. I'm saying this as we started the legislation that still operates today. I was there in the founding of the only free trade station so many years ago. I'm in management consulting. My comments I want to address is to the MEC. MEC we need to have an articulation of what the industry should be. Issues of protection can be dealt with, whether it's this exercise, it's the first six months down the line, that's not the point. We need to know what the breakdown of that 68 billion is and take measures to shift it. Last comment, mm -hmm. you don't need to wait for legislation to be effective. As an example, I speak to people overseas in Hollywood who want to come and make movies in South Africa despite whatever comments people may make. Uh, we can make that an additional revenue source for our people. The one thing you can do at MEC is to make sure that when those sets are set up, there's adequate protection and security. You don't just leave it to the production company. We make ourselves attractive. I'm giving you just one scenario where if you don't have to go to this place to begin making
If we did, we wait for people to be, to be signed. Is another day an actor, an artist, a creative in some way is exploited and their lives are harmed? These people that are opposed to the bill in this way, and then they're not even being specific. Oh, their problem with the bill is too complicated to explain. Those people opposing the bill are, mm -hmm. are I'm sorry, they're frankly killing through their horrible sort of way of delaying the bill creates lives. They're damaging people's lives. And I want to know who she really represents, because I don't believe she's just there representing herself. I think she's representing their citizens. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask her to quickly respond to that, and then um, I'm going to ask my panelists to um, give a comment on some of the calls that we received, and then we come to the floor. Um, I'm uh, on the board of the Independent Black Filmmakers uh, Collective. I'm part of the IPO. I rep I'm a producer, and I'm a worker in the creative arts. And as a worker in the creative arts, I need to defend my rights to earn money, not just in the media. We, as producers, are, are seen as indentured labor because what we do for, for the broadcasters is we work and we get immediate money, but we don't get any residuals, we don't get any payment afterwards because of the way the 1938 bill was structured. So I am a worker and I, that's who I represent. I represent the people who need to have this bill changed and I am part of that coalition, and I have no problem being part of the coalition, but I think that being part of the coalition is more important than, for instance, Recreate, which is funded by Google, and funded by Google to defend this bill. So we need to understand that there are vested interests, but this bill does not, the, the Copyright Amendment Bill is a very, very problematic bill. And we can't okay. decide. Let's recreate. Okay. Uh, 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 no, 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 just quickly. Uh, the proposal there from Nina, that why don't we have a situation where we have, where the industry agrees on certain sections in the proposal, in the proposed bill, let that be a part of the bill and let that be assented to by the president and then we deal with the more problematic issues um, way down the line. Well, you know, I, I, I strongly believe that uh, the president's hands are tied. Somehow, there's some people who, are, who have asked him not to sign this bill. Yeah. And uh, uh, from, from not wanting to mention people's names, it's got to do with multi-choice Americans. Uh, they, they are holding our president's hand tight that he shouldn't sign this bill. In the meantime, our artists, I have never received any, and I'm not speaking uh, for me, myself alone, I'm speaking for all artists. I have had people say, we saw you on a repeat of this, on, on Zanzi Magic and a repeat of that. I have never received a penny of royalties. I'm struggling as an, I'm blacklisted, by the way. I was told Why that I'm blacklisted because first time when I, when, when I had an issue with the producers, when they decided that because they had reached a ceiling with, my, with, the, with the amount of money that they were paying me. They had reached the ceiling. So now they have to drop me from a, a, a global contract. It meet contract, meet contract. You sign a year contract. Mm -hmm. And then meet contract, they say, we've run out of the storyline for your character. So we want to uh, 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 cancel the global contract and put you on a pay call rate. I'm 50 years in this industry. I must get paid the same amount as a young student who's just come out of college to learn how to be an artist. So me and that artist must wait, must end the same. It is more than an insult. So when I complained, that was first in Mubango. Then it became other productions, but the latest, which was 2017, it was what Batisha wrote about. When the Fergusons, first contract, second contract, mid contract, mm -hmm. assigned a global contract. In May, we're starting in May, May, June, July, or September, they say, sorry, Ma, we're going to have, I've got that letter, it's right here. And I posted it on Facebook and Twitter because he was denying that he had written that letter. So I put it on Twitter to say, here you are, you, you signed me for a second season. Now, for me, I'm not complaining about myself only, there's a whole lot of artists who are going through that. And then when I opened my mouth to complain, and it was all on public before Batista wrote his letter, Suddenly, I'm blacklisted. I was told by two very prominent producers. 
I met one at the Nalehia Wall. He says, Mama, you know we wanted to work with you, but we were told you are so impossible to work with. Uh, you are too expensive. Now, how can I be expensive? I will show you things that will shock you. In 2003, when I was in Mubango, here it is. 2003, when I was in Mubango playing Catherine, I was earning 65,000 rand a month. 2003. And then suddenly I'm told by Shana, who is a child, and every other producer that your fee is too high. Excuse me, you want to pay me peanuts? Go find a monkey. Yes.
and add squeezers. Yeah, squeezers. Secondly, I think on the issues of, of, of transformation, and let me not, let me not continue without saying, uh, by the way, thanks, NEC, because when we're in Pretoria, we said we'll organize another session for the green teams, and here we are, and we did it in a public space. But I want to say that it's not only about these two legislations that we are talking about. To transform the industry, you need to also start thinking about the fact that we are part of a global society and a global community. And as a result, this country, 25 years later, we've got no paragraph on cultural diplomacy. A lot of our artists go out in the world and they get exploited because no one defends them. Not even the missions abroad defends them. And I think we shouldn't limit ourselves to what is available. Because it does seem to me that fundamentally the problem here, the differences that we see here could be because we did not start the process of developing this legislation. You can't have the sector differing on the content of a document that, pro that must protect them. Mm -hmm. So this notion that the industry can think for itself, it must come to an end. This notion that people must decide what is right or what is wrong for the industry, I think it must come to an end. Allow the industry to speak for itself, put the laws, and I agree with the lady who spoke. Let's start with the things that we all agree on, yeah. and let that pass. Okay. And then allow ourselves to interrogate further what is it that we want. But I think it is important that we continue these platforms, and thanks for this initiative. It, I, I, I would propose that it, it, it continues. Yes, sir. Uh, remember that uh, Nina said you guys must have a WhatsApp group as well. Uh, so we're going to go to power news headlines. When we come back, we're going to get some closing remarks. I am going to come to the floor. I promise you that. We're going to come to the floor, get some closing remarks, and Renee will get your response just after this. Thanks, Andrew. Good morning. News making headlines this summer. Jacob Zuma's legal team has indicated that the Columbia of Honey will be to the Yeah. 
legal obligation in clause 5 and 7, and we don't need to sign that contract in order for us to adhere to it. We've got, out of everybody that claims repeat fees, 80% of repeat fees are claimed directly by Aston and not production companies. Okay, thank you so much, Renee. So, Renee, um, I'd like you to listen to um, Ayurveda um, Mavanya. Um, I think that she might just have a solution to your particular problem when it comes to commissioning and what she calls unfair practices uh, of commissioning. Hello. Um, I was paid by in 2007 that was focusing on unfair commissioning practices in the production film and television industry. So one of the things that I was particularly interested in based on the experience after working for Casa and the NFA was the whole issue of you know, uh, the concept of he who pays all. And my my particular issue was, why is it that broadcasters feel they need to hold all the rights? We know that it's problematic in terms of that uh, particular provider because uh, it says uh, broadcasters will hold all rights in perpetuity, including all other media now known and unknown. So I'm not, I know that some of the things have already come up, but I think what's missing in the conversation for me is the role of ICASA. ICASA is important because they have the power. They have the mandate to regulate broadcasters. And they regulate in terms of various tools, and those tools come in the form of regulation. One of the things that I've not had so far as part of the regulation is in, ter is, uh, is in terms of the current um, terms, uh, terms uh, uh, regulation that deals with uh, commissioning practices. It, it, it addresses issues of fairness, transparency, and uh, non-discrimination. My, my question to everybody else, especially the industry organizations, is are you holding a, a CASA accountable? Because one of the things that is required in terms of this uh, regulation is that broadcasters are supposed to come up with commissioning protocols that are supposed to be available on their website. Some of the things that they are required to report on on an annual basis to ICASA is who have they commissioned, which companies have they commissioned, and for what content, how many episodes, how much money are those commissions worth, and what type of production companies are these? Are they small, are they medium, or are they you know, micro enterprises? And I, I think that I would like to contribute to this conversation by saying that the likes of the NFDF who are legislated to have a relationship with ICASA to deal with issues around content should form part of this conversation because at the end of the day, we can have a lengthy conversation about what's wrong with the corporate amendment bill and the consumer's protection bill, but there are current tools that are in place that should be effectively implemented for the benefit of everyone. And just to remind everybody, Broadcasters need internet product, uh, producers as much as the uh, as internet producers need the performers and the actors. So for this industry to be sustainable, for this industry to transform, it requires everybody to contribute and to play their role. But my argument in my paper was that we acknowledge that the, it's not a level playing field. Obviously, broadcasters wield more power, and that the independent producer would wield more power in terms of the relationship with the actors and the performers. So my, one of the suggestions that I made in my paper, even though it's 2007, it's funny that not much has changed, and it's sad. So what I'm trying to advocate for is to say, some people are saying, no, there's no need to lobby. Unfortunately, lobbying is a very a big deal, and it's part of policy making. If you are a lone voice and you don't make the effort to make sure that you highlight twice what your concerns are, then you're not gonna have agency. So I'm just saying, it's not as if there's nothing in place. What needs to happen is hold the bodies like ICASA accountable. Hold the broadcasters and make sure that on the information that they are requested to make publicly available, request that information and interrogate it. Talk about the issues of fees. Talk about the issues of diversity. Are they making sure that these commissions are also uh, uh, decentralized and giving opportunities to producers who are in Limpopo, who are in Mpumalanga, to make sure that our industry is as diverse as possible? Thank you for that. Uh, Sandy, have you guys been struggling to hold um, ICASA accountable? Uh, oh, sorry, 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 not Sandy, the end, yeah. Um, I think that this is an important issue which we haven't really touched on today, um, which is that producers are also struggling with the relationship with broadcasters, particularly around the cut in spending on local productions, um, which goes across the board from SABC, 
to multi-choice. Um, and I think as we're here today, everything's very heated, and this argument really is around a lot of economic transformation for people in the industry, and how do we retain key talent? And it's quite telling that we don't really have much representation from the broadcasters here. So I think one of the things that we're doing as the IPO um, is that we're going to be engaging with the broadcasters pretty soon on a way forward, and we're going to get together as a collective and start talking more seriously about how do we put pressure on broadcasters around cost per minute. Okay. <coughs> um, so uh, thank you very much. My name is Tavis Sultan from South Africa, and I'm a government of Hudson and the uh, you can go ahead. All right. I, I think the, the first thing that I would like to say. Okay, come, come walk with me. Let's walk away from the speaker and then we can, and then we can say, yeah. Okay, I think what we need to fix is that uh, our languages are being undermined. So even if the, the, the cap can be brought back, they need to make sure that it is able to communicate in all the languages, not only one language. Because someone who is in Kazakh and who has a Hussan cannot be able to read that English. Uh, number two, I will, I will, I will say to MPC, uh, your office is not ready to transform. They are able to host, they are able to host a carnival that takes about 15 million, but they are, they are, they, they are able to release a funding of 4 million, uh, which is an embarrassment to the artist for the fund. And uh, if that transformation needs to happen, we need to make sure that uh, events like global conference festivals, uh, that was here, uh, uh, taking money to Americans. It must not happen if they are not going to start on the ground and involve artists. The microphone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and, and involve artists on the ground. And uh, for me, that is transformation. You can't allow Americans to come with their engineers, their, their instrumentalists, and everybody but South Africans. They get nothing out of it. It, 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 it must not happen again. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry. Let me say two things. 2012, the government declared that artists belong to the Department of Social Development. Are we still heading there for our own? Number two, let's go there and my language. The government presented the whole research and recommendation. And we were told that we need to do what we need for social development for our kind. Number two, now I'm looking at the future. There's going to be a lot of future development in terms of infrastructure. Cinemas and theaters must function. Yes. Are artists going to be part of that in terms of ownership? Having stayed there as a shareholder, I think this is where we're supposed to go. Thank you. Okay, um, so in a section of this industry that we haven't focused on is the animation industry. Uh, Isabel, good morning. Good morning, I'm Ruth Long Walk from Animation in Spain. Um, I think there's a few issues that are really pertinent to us as an industry, and we usually completely ignore and not known. If you look at some of the support of industry, animation is very minimal on that. So one of the things is ICASA and the wording um, for allowance is the children's, they put it under children and never use the word animation. So broadcasters use this as a loophole not to put local animated content on our broadcasters. The impact of this is means our children do not have access to culturally relevant content. Disney and all the likes get to dominate on that. And what a long running TV series is, is an advert for the merchandising. All they're doing is enriching European and American com companies making our children beg for those brands mm -hmm. instead of begging for African brands of dogs. The dogs that are out there, those companies are struggling. If they were linked to a TV series, instantly our kids are demanding that because the brand has been raised on the big broadcasters. So the other issue is on this, um, uh, the, for animation, this the Copyright Amendment Bill is really critical because our biggest income is the merchandising. The reason a lot of our content is running at a loss is because we haven't figured out how to roll out the merchandising component of that. And that is a critical part of the broadcaster coming on board. We cannot do it without a long-running series. The film is a whole different business model. So in terms of the Copyright Amendment Bill, it's about short-term gains versus long-term royalties. For us, 
the impact of taking away those long term, uh, the, the, the income for our industry on the long term, that is royalties for our children in the future. So we say, let's rather, instead of signing now and give, you know, they were tied to this for 30 years, if, I, if I'm correct. And so I'd rather that we do it correctly and ensure that we, we just make it a little bit more fair for everybody. Yes. Okay, quick comment. Uh, actually, uh, I'm standing here and I'm representing millions of young people from rural areas who have been marginalized. As you can see, that we're being silenced right here towards them by you as well. So, so, so what we're saying, um, what the Great Move Transformation the ones is, that the uh, MEC, the uh, ones that invite to your silencing. MEC, the ones that invite to your silencing. Yeah, no, you're silencing me. I'll be running around you. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm saying, MEC, for us to transform the industry, the first step we must remove the internet in there. Because if you have more than 10 years, and it's not really good for the industry. Absolutely. If you look at this equipment for the board, including I feel your, your NAC, it's calling politicians that there's no artists who are being put there. In terms of the SABC, I feel I don't want to be my The SABC uh, is the only public broadcaster that is also silencing our own cultures in the country. We grew up watching you, Mama, and then now as we speak, these people want the bailout year in and year out. They still take the bailout money that is coming from the taxpayers. They export it to America. So what we're saying, we're going to, the, to, the, to, the, to our government. That was our government must take us serious as the local people in South Africa. They must start investing in South Africa. And then let's not become just actors in the screen. We want to see you, Mama, as the owners of the means of the production. Because the production companies and those who own the cameras are white people. They probably are not going to be speaking uh, things we haven't seen They want to see yeah, black people as well owning the means of production. And then because the very chain of the creative industry, it doesn't benefit us. We're just actors. How do you have a, 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 a mama here getting paid a money that is a young person uh, from, from our, our age is getting paid? We are saying well, our legends must be respected. In America, mama, you can get paid. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you. I think the key thing for the IPOSEC um, position is that we're trying to make sure we're working with industry bodies to create terms of references, working with SAGA, for example, to put an actors contract and police contract in place, which becomes standardized for our members. We work with the Wider Skills, we're working with all these different industry organizations to do that. Um, key for us is to try and work together because when we approach broadcast, we're approaching as 50 different organizations without having our ducks in a row the sector becomes difficult. Our next call is for broadcasters to actively engage with industry in terms of reference from a broadcaster's perspective towards the rest of us. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, just show. Well, the, um, the only last thing I can say is that we as artists, we need to probably come together more than we've done here and hold a summit. Yes. Where we can now deal with the issues of being this division between artists. Because some of the artists, I have to be honest, we are our own enemies. Yes. We contribute to other artists getting fired in productions. Yes. We become such close friends and lovers and whatever you want to call it with a producer. <laughs> and I can speak, I'm writing another book, by the way, and I told you. I think um, it's important that we, can I use that? I, I think that uh, in my closing remarks, it's important that we understand who the enemy is. Uh, we are not, and we must understand how government works and how business works. Uh, we are not the president. The president deploys ministers. So let's not waste time with things that we have no power over. 
Uh, so, so let's focus on the enemy. The enemy is the poverty that is uh, killing the creative industry. So let us begin. Let us begin. Uh, and I like what Mama said who did the research. We've got tools that are existing. With the summit, let's not go all over the show. Let's begin with this legislation that is in front of the uh, president. Let's find one another uh, in terms of the animation guys and everybody else that is not happy and make sure that we move forward as one to make sure that we are progressing. Thank you. Okay, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna just add on to what's being said by the other panelists. I think even today, there's a lot of um, different opinions, particularly on the bill, and I think access to information and education around it would greatly benefit everybody so that we can really get to the bottom of what we're disagreeing on. Um, because I haven't quite heard what the disagreement is, I just hear that it's a very impassioned discussion. So I think the idea of the summit is lovely and I think that um, we do need to find unity on, on what divides us. Okay, so the person who started this entire thing is sitting right there, echoing the... 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes. How do you feel now just wait for the ten minutes. Um, Don't take it's very emotional. I mean, um, as a okay. person, right. everyone okay. is saying this has been very okay. hard for okay. so long. Sorry, sorry. And um, I'm just hoping that what what has started now is going to continue and constructively and we can all come together and have one right. great industry because that's what we want at the end of the day. Yes, to the summit? Yes. Yes. Okay, great stuff. So now let's get a yes to the summit from the ABC. ABC, your first yes. remarks. It, it's, it's definitely a big yes from us. You know, everybody can say various things about government and the role that we have played, but let's all be mindful that we are here today and we have put ourselves to have this engagement and engage with everybody. It's a tough decision, it's a tough discussion, um, but we have put ourselves here to say, we want to hear what your concerns are. Because as much as some of you don't want to come together to have a union of some sort or an organization that repre represents your views, the only thing we can do as a government is to have more engagements of this nature. So this is just the step. We will be having others because what we've been discussing a lot of is some of the challenges that those on camera are facing. When you think about those that are performing in theaters, it's far worse. You're, you really are uh, dealing with people who are dealing with far worse situations there, who are really are being exploited, who don't get the money that you at least enjoy when you're in front of the camera. So there's a lot of these engagements we will be having with different individuals, those in animation and so forth. We are open to all of you, we are a listening government, and we really, this is what today was about. I'll be going back to the minister to say, this is what Kaudeng has initiated. We've had an engagement, we've heard the concerns of the individuals. They are the saying, That's please the sign. They are saying that, please, let's get the bill signed. Because we do need to regulate the industry, and it starts with legislation and protecting the performance. What are you saying, MC? Are you saying our president should sign the bill? No. No! no. <laughs> also, please tell the government, no. why are we taxed when we are not workers? No. No. Please. So, no. what we are saying, and this has been coming out a lot of, is that performance, you see there's lots of contesting issues regarding the bill. But what is clear, and I think what we need to focus on, is on the areas of the bill where we agree. Because I think that we may need to segment it in that manner. Let's deal with the areas where we agree, and one is that there is exploitation. So let's immediately deal with that. That performers need to get what is due to them, in the same way that we need to engage the broadcasters, we need to also engage, have a, an, an intimate discussion also with the producers. I think that is critical, because so that we don't have everybody clashing amongst each other. I was saying to the individuals and the panelists here, is that we really want to facilitate an engagement amongst everybody, because all of you are invested in this industry, because you're all stakeholders in it. But we want to hear what all of your concerns are, where the challenges are, and where we can bring everybody together. And this is really what today was about. The bill is critical. Yeah. And I think what we're going to do now, and part of my engagement with the minister is to say, this is where the challenges have been identified, but the protection of the performance has to take place. And in his engagement with the president is that they need to see what areas can then be signed off so that at least there is some regulation. Mm -hmm. So that as Mama Nandita correctly says, when you have an artist and a performer that comes into the industry, let them not be yet another story that we yeah. read about that is exploited. So it's just to really thank everybody for being here. We've heard your, con your criticism. We really take it with good light. I don't think that you're bashing us. 
I take it as an area for us to learn from. We are a new government, we are listening, and we really are here for you. Speak to them and say, it's not a fashion session. You need to come on board because you are a critical player in the sector. So we will engage them. I'll have a separate discussion with them and ensure that as we have that summit and we move towards the summit, they really need to be part. We can't just have the producers and the actors alone. Well, thank you so much. And thank you guys, everyone who came. And apologies that we couldn't get everyone's comments, but we really appreciate that you came through to be part of this conversation. And at least now we have the summit that will be taking place. And let's say that the summit the was I appoint our when we meet our own as the official comments part of it. Thank you very much. I want to partner with us on this, those that are against and those that are for. So we can agree to those that are against and come out with the results. Congratulations, thank you on the summit.